Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Mad Capper and this is another video on Raid Shadow Legends. Today we are starting a new series and this series is going to be a spotlight on the champions that I typically use within Raid Shadow Legends. I want to say up front, this is not a guide. This is not a way you should or could or must build any particular champion, but it's given me an opportunity to highlight how I use these champions with my team in my game. The advantage of this is it'll give you another idea or another sort of thought on how you can use some of the champions that I commonly use to get through progress in this game. And maybe it's something that you don't need at all, but maybe it is. And it'll just give you some kind of something to watch, if nothing else. The reason behind this series is, and most important to let you know, I am not getting rid of the I built them so you don't have to. As a matter of fact, I have hope almost done and hope to have her within the next 24 hours. And we have a new champion that we've picked out and I'm excited to try it out because kit wise, Looks a lot more interesting than I think we've given him credit for. And I've only seen one other guide on this champion in the last 12 months uh, of the game. So I'm really excited to bring that out for you. The problem is I've run out of six star champions. I only have a couple left that I might be able to do as part of that series, which means I'm running out of options, <laughs> to be frank. And as you can tell, I have some resources, but I don't have a whole lot of resources, which means it does take time and effort to build these champions up. I have to bring them through and I have to have the books for them. I have to get them to six star 60. I have to fully ascend them, so potions, and I have to fully master them. This set of tasks, can take weeks sometimes if you don't have the necessary resources. Now, I do get some resources from Plarium as part of the content creator program, but I'm still on the lowest tier, so it's not nearly enough to be able to six star a champ every week, let alone two, three, four times a week. Also, I have my own champions that I need to build out. For example, I just pulled Coronor and Manaya within the last three weeks, and I want to build those two up for part of my account. So I have to balance the needs of my account for playing and the ability to show you guys what I can do and all the cool stuff that we can go through. So because of that, I've decided to do this series, which is an opportunity to show you some of the champions that are already built out. I don't need to rebuild them or re-gear them or anything. I just need to show you and highlight what they can do. I will show you their gear, their masteries, where I use them in each dungeon, and explain my thought process behind building them. If you have any follow-up questions, you're more than welcome to jump onto my Discord. It's the Madhouse, and I am there and available anytime. Simply just ping me, and we can talk about what you feel I need to do with the champions or help you out with your champion. So without further ado, let's start it up. This is the very first Madhouse Spotlight. And today, we're talking about my favorite champion, Ethos. So here is my Ethos. Uh, as you can see right away, we'll talk about the fact that I have him in Relentless Gear. Uh, the reason for this is threefold. Number one, he he works really well in Relentless Gear. The ability to lower your cooldowns to get him back to his two AoE skills, which are his A2 and A3, allow you to get through dungeons faster. It allows me to campaign farm better, especially in Nightmare Campaign because I don't have him in Savage Gear, which I think is pretty much a requirement for him to otherwise properly farm uh, Nightmare. Uh, and I, uh, frankly, the, it's my best gear. I have three of the four are legendary pieces and they have some really great rolls. I have a 45 speed with a double attack and a single crit rate with crit damage on it. And that's a key piece, right? I have an attack chest that has speed, it has crit rate and crit damage on it. I have gloves that are crit damage gloves with attack and a double crit rate roll. Yeah, the defense isn't ideal, but honestly, when you look them through them all, I've got a crit rate, double crit rate, attack and crit damage and speed like all f all of these things have the absolute necessaries right double crit damage crit rate speed it is a common thing on these gear it, it, as it shows you that uh let's go talk about his stats first um my end game goal for him to build him out is to get him to 6k attack and to about 248 speed uh, i don't remember the exact number but my goal is this i want my lissandra at 270. all right here is an opportunity for me to inter interject with some mathuses, uh, courtesy of Deadwood Jedi's website. If you go to deadwoodjedi.com, you too can figure out your leads. So as you can see here, I have two infographics. Uh, the first one is a Lissandra lead and it's calculating your speeds. The second one is an Arbiter lead. Um, what it is, the lead is the fastest champion, not necessarily the champion with the speed lead. Obviously Arbiter is the speed lead on both of them. 
The goal here is to figure out what speeds I need my champion to be. And the reason why I use both of them is because I want to know both what it looks like when Lissandra lands her speed decrease and doesn't land it. And that's where I get the speed. So if we look at the second one, it says Arbiter as the first champion. But make no mistake, that is both times it is the fastest champion being Lissandra. I'm just trying to emulate what would happen if Lissandra's speed decrease on the enemy was resisted against high resist teams and when you look at that that's the side that i want to gear all my champions so i say about 248 in the video but it's actually 250.39 it's gonna have to be 251 so that's what i want my eventual arbiter to be 370 which means i want to start building my ethos out for 251 now and that also my ghost born at 252 right so that they they go in the proper order I don't want to wait until I get that gear because then I just have to keep rebuilding everyone. This way I have the opportunity. I can build my my ethos, his final stats to be 251 or as close to that as I can get. Now, obviously you see on the one on the left, as long as he's 219, which is why I say my speed is a little bit short right now. At 219, assuming Lissandra's accuracy is high enough to land her decrease speed or decrease turn meter he's fine as almost perfectly fine as he is now but that just gives you an idea of what i'm trying to build and why i say the things i do i hope that was a little bit of a helpful interjection the 6k attack i think is very doable first of all i don't have great ring on him i think i can get a triple roll ring i think that would make a huge difference plus when i change out the gear we'll talk about the gear in a second when I change out the gear, just getting a, a you know another more attack substats. Like I have one that's a defense substat, one that's an HP. If I can get those to more attack substats, that'll easily get me to 6K. I think it's definitely doable, um, or at least as close to as possible, right? Over 5K is great, but I think that 6K mark would make me a real platinum threat. So as for his gear, uh, right now I haven't been relentless and we explained why, but I, ultimately I would like him to have be in savage, uh, with cruel gear down the middle. Now I'm working on cruel gear. The other option of course is three sets of cruel gear, which isn't as good for, of course, the, um, the overall defense, ignoring defense, but it will help with the attack up right? Because it's a 15% aura for attack. So I am working on cruel gear. I will change the middle up as soon as I can. And just uh, as, a, as a preview, I have my rotos here. And my rotos is actually in four of those pieces of cruel gear. And you can see the numbers are, are, are so far holding up, except for speed. That's fine. I have I, I can get the speed. So I'm just looking for a really good helm in uh, cruel gear. And I'll probably steal this from rotos, put it on my ethos because that's really the guy that I use the most often. So it would make more sense, especially in the arena for me to put it on him. So that's kind of where I'm going with it. If I can get savage on the outsides, well, who cares where, but I mean, in my head, savage on the outsides and, and cruel up the middle, then I'm getting that, uh, that 30% defense, uh, ignore defense. I'm getting good attack, 6k attack, what we're looking for. I'm kind of getting all the stats. Now, this is really good. Don't get me wrong. This is really good. But we want to take that next level. We want to push that to great. We want to push that to end game. So that's kind of where I'm looking for. Um, for his masteries, uh, there's a... Okay, I got to explain his masteries. So I, I do think I'm going to change them up slightly. But his defense, I brought this way because that's how I've always built every champion that I want to have retribution that doesn't need the support tree. I build them to retribution and I've always built them to the AOE mitigation. This is attack mitigation, but I actually think that's not the right way to do this. And at some point I'm gonna change it, but it's so minor, it's such a minute detail that I don't wanna do it right away. I will eventually though. I wanna give him resistance rather than defense because the 75 defense isn't doing anything for me. Then I want this because I think it is more important that I can decrease the damage on a crit hit. So think of me up against a Trunda. Trunda gets a shot in there. If I can reduce her damage by 8% and I have a shield uh, set on, you know, shield set on one of my other champions, that might be enough to save his life. And I think this would probably do better. The nukers that are typically killing me are, are hitting me with, with crits. That's where I'm dying. So I think 8% on a crit is more important than 5% on an AoE. And then this is just an added ability if I do get frozen, but I'm, you know, think of it, I have Torment on my team and we're freezing and stunning back and forth. The chance that Ethos will get that immunity just from coming out of this, it's situational, but it's an added bonus. And then having that extra resist for every debuff on this champion, he's already got pretty good resist. So if I can just resist more of those 
those opportunities to freeze me and then of course get to retribution that way i think that'll be way more impactful on this type of champion i'm not getting this is ridiculous i'm how many times is ethos getting hit and staying alive uh the answer is not a lot so i don't think this is doing a whole lot for me and this here honestly yeah it has a 50 percent chance of removing a debuff ah uh, maybe maybe okay but honestly is that again is that more important than getting that that mitigation through this way so that's what i think i'm going to change over on this side the obvious ones of course are the crit rate the crit damage early game i did go with flawless execution on him but there was a point at which i knew i had to switch him over and i did so i switched him over to helm smasher this is way more impactful in the arena with aoe champions and think of it this way as a2 hits three times he has a 50 percent chance on each hit so that's 12 hits total against a full arena team uh other than that these are just way, means to an end i use this um it's always nice to get that skill cooldown the speed i do use him in farming this is not really important for me in brutal but it definitely is a nightmare and it helps me be able to farm nightmare and we'll show that in the video and uh, i like the the first eight percent of the first hit on each enemy remember that i'm to understand when he's hitting him with his multi-hit aoe it's only the first one of the three so um this if you don't have rotos and you're and you're manualing you always want to use his a3 because it still hits harder than his a2 his a2 is going to be really good for shields and for rotos and i'm sure there might be other champions where situationally it makes sense but his a3 manually is how you want to go he will always prioritize his a2 because it has a debuff on it even though you'll never land the debuff with no accuracy so um the other thing is a shield breaker now this is a bit controversial a lot of people like it a lot of people think it's useless the reason why i use this is because his a2 can break shields getting that extra 25 percent when i'm going up against a team that has shields even if it's those personal shields uh when you consider the fact that i usually use ghostborn so i'm not actually stripping the other team so i'll bring in madam saris when i know the person has shields but if i don't know the person has shields and i come in this is just going to help me kill the other team I don't think the 5% when attacking with five, with full HP is going to be so mind-changing that I've made a mistake here. But there are a lot of people that actually don't believe that Shieldbreaker is the right answer. I do on this champion because of my comp. If you are using a stripper, if you are using, you know, Sathalia, Madam Saris, uh, Pope, maybe... Um, then th this makes no sense. Stop using this. This is for when you know you're not going to have a strip, which I don't because I won't because I have I have Ghostborn in most of my comps. So that's why I'm going with that there. So uh, that's him. That's everything about him. Now let's just uh, let's just uh, showcase what he can do. Okay, for the first attempt here, uh, we are doing Nightmare Campaign Farming. Uh, does it say Nightmare in here? Of course it doesn't. We can see 220. 220 i mean these are the numbers uh it is stage six that is if you're nightmare farming stage six is where to go if you're using ethos i will tell you you need savage gear because i have relentless this works about 75 percent of the time because i'm currently leveling up mania it's going to be 100 percent. same with corner when you're leveling up champions and you put a little bit of gear on them it'll be 100 percent uh when you're trying to just uh farm food it's actually going to be very career limiting for your your ability without savage it's just not quite enough and it, that is something i think is very important to note i don't want you to follow my build which is why this isn't a guide to say oh well capper did it so so can i so you can see there um he was able to take two turns now here um you know, no extra turns, but you see her shield was just enough damage mitigation that I'm okay. And he's going to get an extra turn here because remember, he's getting that extra speed because of the mastery. And then he's going to kill them all right here. Uh, and then boom, easy 21 seconds. The only reason it's 21 seconds is because Manaya was taking turns. But, um, you know, 14 seconds is my best time. Uh, let's take him into dungeons now. So Ice Golem, I stopped using him, uh, but I can still use him in it. I just... I was using uh, Lord Chamfort, and so Sir Nick was an obvious uh, pair because it makes him hit so much harder and his shield so much bigger. It's crazy. But before that, I used to run it like this, and I actually would run probably Sir Nick as a lead a lot of the times. Lord Chamfort is awesome for the Ice Golem. 
And it was funny because I actually just kind of found this out playing around. And then I'm like, am I am I missing something? Have we been missing this the whole time? Lord Chamfort's really good against Ice Golem. Like even without books, he has a he has an attack down, he has an accuracy debuff, he hits okay, puts up self shields, he can last forever, he's got a big aura. And then when I'm done, I'm kind of looking on on uh, YouTube and and my good friend uh my good friend Jay Giggs, of course, has a new video out, Lord Champfort soloing Ice Golem. So uh, it wasn't just me. I wasn't just dreaming. I don't have amazing gear on him. I just have throw me throw me down gear, but absolutely awesome. And then you see that attack down. This is why I don't use Ethos anymore because he's going to die. I just, you can't keep him alive. So I could bring in an Arbiter to res, but honestly, I just started using Sir Nick. It doesn't matter if he dies. Uh, this team can actually solo. Um... Uh, really hurts. Uh, this is actually one of the longest runs. I do have a 109, I think, is my fastest. Uh, 59 second. Okay. I don't know. I don't even remember which team had that, to be perfectly honest. But, uh, I mean, honestly, he got through the waves. He did everything he needed to do. But then he dies. So he can be used there. I used him right up until, like, honestly, whenever the two or whenever the uh, tournament for the fragments was for Ice Golem. So a week ago, maybe, if that. Spider's Den. If you have Ethos and you need a nuker that's AoE, you can use them. I don't. Uh, Dragon. I definitely use them in Dragon. Uh, this is the team I love to use in Dragon all the time. And basically, it's um, it's a debuff, nuke, and then they'll just finish it off here. Boom. And then rinse, repeat. So here, she's going to throw down bombs. The only thing is, because my Draco is in, um, in my clan boss... I would normally tune him better, but I'm not going to change him up just for this run because they can still finish it really quickly. If it was an issue, I'd make sure that Draco went second and then Ethos every time, but honestly, whatever. And then again, Ethos' job is just to get him here. He's not going to be a major damage dealer. He does okay, but as you can see, it's not crazy damage. Um, you know, Warrant Master or Giant Slayer work really a lot better on the, on the Dragon, but I'm not going to change it up just for this, right? If you were to die there, who cares? Um, we're just here to get our champions. I had, but this is actually bad RNG. It's probably the worst run I've had on this too. Uh, 55 seconds. Usually it's around 40 seconds, I think. 31 seconds. I think it's usually around 40 seconds. So that was just some bad RNG. All right. So here you go. You're going to have the turn meter, the debuff, the nuke, the A2. And then uh, we're going to prime our reset. And she's smart enough not to reuse her debuff. There he goes. Kills him. Uh, and then we're into the round two. Of course, she's already back on to hers because it reset. And then he's able to use his A3 here. Uh, makes for a pretty quick. There's the uh, the old Heart Seeker, which is good because that means she can't use it against the shield, which is always a pain in the butt. Even though it really doesn't matter, it does slow down the whole comp uh, a little bit. So there... See, that's where the Relentless comes in really well in dungeons. Because he was able to get an extra proc there, extra turns, he was able to get back to his A2, which helps break out the shield. Uh, always a, It's just always a nice thing to have, honestly. Uh, it also does pretty decent damage, although honestly, we're just waiting for um, the nuke here, which I think she uses here. Yeah, Heartseeker here. Then we're going to get a turn reset. And then, boom, we're going to get the Heartseeker again as soon as it's her turn. Oh, yeah. Turn meter was too low. That every once in a while happens, which is a bit of an annoyance. Um, now she'll use it because her A2 is um, is on cooldown. She'll use her A2 over her A3 if it's below 25%, I think it is, on the turn meter. Which, of course, just depends on how quickly Lysandra gets around to it. It's about a 60-40 she uses her Heartseeker two times in a row. It's very strange. But either way, minute 32, I have gotten a minute three. There he goes. That's him in all dungeons, uh, most of which I use. Now, this is where this is where the magic happens, all right? Um, and I'm not just saying that because he's a master of magic. I'm saying that because this is where the magic happens. Uh, he is a top-tier champion. Yeah, lot to lot to say about Trunda. Everyone loves Trunda. I get it. But Trunda is one champion. And she's affinity. Ethos has no affinity. He's a mercenary. 
he kills everyone equally. So he may not quick hit quite as hard, but he pretty darn close. And as you can see here, dead. And thus completes my champion spotlight on Ethos. Thank you for joining me in my first of hopefully many spotlights on the champions as part of the madhouse, part of my roster, part of the champions I actually use. In the gear, I actually use them. I'm not swapping around gear to make them look better than they actually are. This is the gear, and this is how I specifically and exactly use them. If you liked it, or if you didn't, leave me a thumbs up anyway. Please like and subscribe. About 73% of you now updated updated stats. About 73% of you do not subscribe to the channel when you watch these videos, and it would be really helpful to me. If you did, it helps the YouTube algorithm, and it helps me at the content creator program. So please like and subscribe. I appreciate you joining me on this video and uh, stay tuned for the hope video coming out next as well as I might just be dropping a video on a champion that I've only ever seen one guide on. Um, I'm not quite ready to sneak peek it yet, but uh, maybe with a keen eye, you might've seen it in this video. Maybe not. Anyway, thank you very much. Please be kind to one another. Stay safe. Practice social distancing, and I'll see you in the next video.